harmony. We love it. Even its name has been borrowed by everyday language to mean closeness, friendliness, human warmth, cooperation, and well-being. Unlike rhythm and melody, harmony wasn't part of music from the beginning. It's an upstart. It came into life gradually during the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. But what an upstart, and how does it work? In this program, I'm going to lift the lid on harmony and look beneath the surface of this, the most sophisticated and seductive of all music's component parts. Over the ages, philosophers, visionaries and scientists have suggested that there might be in nature some kind of celestial or perfect music, that there might be music in the orbiting of the planets and the spheres themselves. Others have talked of the heavenly music of angels and archangels. Why have they believed this? What aspect of music is it that has provoked such speculation? The answer is harmony. It seems to be more mystical, elusive and magical than other elements of music. It feels like it's come from some place or time that's beyond our everyday experience. While it's tempting to imagine that harmony has somehow floated down to us from heaven, the truth is that harmony has been painstakingly constructed over centuries of human creative endeavour and has allowed composers to manipulate our emotions like no other aspect of music. It has its rules and tricks. It's like a delicate or complicated machine, a beautiful clock, say, or a rich and exotic language where every nuance can mean the difference between perfect understanding and chaos. At its most basic, harmony is tensional coming together of two or more sounds for pleasant effect. All the world's musical cultures share this idea. In East Asian gamelan music, which has been relatively unchanged for hundreds of years, several sounds may be occurring simultaneously at any one moment. But harmony in Western music is doing something else altogether turning the collision of notes into a deliberate and complex structure of its own. Western harmony began separating off from all other world musics in around the 12th century. And the best way to get to grips with what harmony does and how is to look at that moment of separation, to see what happened when European harmony started to have a mind of its own, when it stopped being merely simultaneous sounds. This is a symphony. It's an ancient European stringed instrument. It's kind of a cross between a violin and a sewing machine. The apparently self-perpetuating note it makes is called a drone. Bagpipes do drones as well. In fact, a lot of the world's folk music involves drones of one kind or another. 
you turn the wheel and make a continuous note, and above it you can play or sing any melody you like. Ye oldy ghetto blaster. Because the drone is constant, every note the singer sings coincides with it, and we hear two notes simultaneously. But this is a crude kind of harmony, because the drone never moves. Then someone had the idea of a movable drone. Again, a crude sort of harmony because the drone simply shadows the melody. If the melody goes up, so does the drone. If it goes down, so does the drone. It's as if they are parallel railway lines that weave across the countryside a few feet apart. In this piece, two singers sing the melody while two sing the drone at a lower pitch. This system of parallel lines gradually disappeared as a new kind of harmony came into being that would hold sway for 700 years right up to the present day. Dream, 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 dream. In the next part, we'll find out how the development of chords revolutionized Western music. Sing, cuckoo, noble, sing, cuckoo, noble, sing, cuckoo, noble, sing, cuckoo, noble, sing, cuckoo. Summer is you coming in, summer is you coming in. Back in 1250, this English song, Summer is a Coming In, was the equivalent of a modern day pop hit. Why is this song so important in the history of harmony? Well, it's because it has a very special drone. This drone moves independently of the tune. What's important is the way that it shifts from this mini chord to this mini chord. And if you play them one after another like this, you have the beginning of what's called a chord progression. And chord progressions are the lifeblood of all Western harmony. Harmony, that is, that doesn't stay static, it moves. What's revolutionary about these two note chords is this. Whenever a note in the melody collides with the two supporting drones, a three note chord is created. This is a momentous departure in music's history. Three note chords are the foundation of Western harmony. Having found that chords could move, the next stage was to find out which chords sounded best in what order. The progressive movement from chord to chord in music can be totally random. There's no rule that says it can't. I could accompany the tune of Summer is a Coming In with these two chords, if I really wanted to. Summer is a coming in, now they sing for good. It's not very nice sounding, but it is harmony of a kind. So what is it that determines which chords you use to accompany your melody? In the early days of chordal harmony, they very quickly developed strict, non-random rules about what you should do. And these ideas became deeply entrenched in the minds of composers over the next 500 years. So where did these strict ideas come from? Who determined that there are hierarchies of notes and that each chord should be made up of three notes? Well, they weren't invented by some brilliant composer or developed by a committee. Hierarchies of notes were there all along, before we humans found them. Once discovered, their power was harnessed and exploited, and it gave immense energy and drive to Western harmony.